good morning welcome 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 good morning go ahead and share Go ahead and share. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Go ahead and share as you join. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. My God, somebody go ahead and begin to share as you join. Just go ahead and share and watch what the Lord will do. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's Tuesday morning. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Hallelujah. It's time to share. Wake up. Hit that button. Invite. Share. Glory to God. It's time to share. People are waiting for the broadcast. So go ahead and begin to share as you join. Invite someone. Hallelujah. Jesus. Glory to God. We are going to pray. Be in the mood to pray. Yes. Be in prayer mode. Thank you, Jesus. It is well. It is well. Let us pray. My God. Good morning, good morning, good morning and welcome wherever you're joining from. May the Lord bless you today with this message. May there be a turnaround in your life. May your circumstances begin to make sense. May things begin to look mm, Jesus. My God, my God, my God. Jesus, mighty God. This morning, oh God, we present ourselves before you just to worship you, just to praise you, just to lift your name, just to magnify you, just to give your thanks. Oh God, we say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Somebody open your mouth and give God a praise. Glory be to God. Jesus. My God, my God, my God. Somebody praise God with me this morning. I need some people to bako sheke sete. Roko dababako shaya. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh God, we give you honor. Oh God, you are the only God. My God, there is none like you, Lord. Jesus. No matter what they say, when trouble come my way, I will praise you, my Lord. 
today, today, I will lift my voice and say, today, all I know, you are always there for me, Lord. Almighty God, you are the only God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we bind the kodobo kosata in badodo kurobo kosaya. Jesus, hey, my God! Somebody open your mouth and give God a praise. Hallelujah, Jesus! Hey, 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 hey! My God, my God, my God! Hey, hi, 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 hi! Glory to God! Hey, kashando robo kosoto robo koshata rababa kasata ya. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My God. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for the spirit of humility. Oh, God, have mercy upon your children today. Remember them, oh, God. Remember them, In the name of Jesus Christ, remember your children today, oh, God. Hallelujah. Father in heaven, we come before you this morning to say, Lord, we love you. I cover every soul here in the blood of Jesus Christ. Remember your children, Lord. You know them by name and number. You know every strand of hair that's on their head. My God, this morning we cry out for protection. Divine protection. Divine protection. In the name of Jesus Christ, we cry out to you, O oh God, for divine protection. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Have your way this morning, Lord God, in our midst. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Oh God, Holy Spirit. Take a seat right next to us this morning. And have your way. Speak to me, O oh God. I command my flesh to be quiet. I command this flesh to be silent. So the Lord can have his way. Flesh, I slay you now. I put a bridle over this mouth in the realms of the spirit. And therefore the Lord will take over. Take over, Daddy Jesus. I cover myself right now from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Good morning to all. If there has never been a time that I need to cover myself, it's today. Because of what the Lord is about to do. So I encourage you that are here, go ahead and share this broadcast on your page. Hallelujah. My eyes are open wide. Welcome. Welcome. I see South Carolina. I see New York City. Welcome. Hallelujah. Good morning. I see Maryland. I see Bridgeport, Connecticut. I see Jamaica. I see New Jersey. I see Grenada. Hallelujah. Welcome. Good morning. I see London, England. Mighty God. Welcome. May the Lord bless you today. Hallelujah. I see Jamaica one more time. I see Jamaica again one more time. Welcome. Jesus. Glory be to God. Mighty God. Welcome. I see Birmingham, England. Welcome. 
The Lord is good and he's faithful. Birmingham, get ready for your blessings. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I see Texas, Houston, Texas. All this time I've been saying Dallas, Texas, not remembering. It's Houston, Texas. Welcome, Houston, Texas. Hallelujah. Welcome, Guyana. Welcome, Trinidad. Welcome, Tobago. Good morning. Welcome. As you join, go ahead and begin to share. My God. Welcome, welcome to those who are watching and didn't comment. Welcome, welcome to all our secret and our silent viewers, the ones that are viewing and be quiet. We welcome you this morning. I would encourage you who are watching in secret to go ahead and begin to share. The Lord is faithful. Welcome, Boynton Beach, Florida. Welcome again, Grenada. Hallelujah. We give God honor and we give him praise. Glory to God. Welcome, welcome. It's Tuesday and the Lord is faithful. Jesus. It's Tuesday and the Lord is faithful. I'm looking for some people to share this broadcast on their page. God is getting ready to do something. Welcome Kingston, Jamaica. Good morning, good morning, Kingston, Jamaica. Good morning, Spanish Town, Jamaica. Welcome, my God. Welcome to Breakfast with Jesus. Welcome to El Shaddai Prayer Tower. If you are here for the first time, I encourage you to go ahead and begin to share. Somebody said, I lost the connection and I couldn't find you for almost a year. I felt like I was in a candy store when I found this platform again. I encourage you, go ahead and begin to share. The Lord is faithful. I am taking a few minutes to welcome all who are here this morning. God is here with us. Hallelujah. You know when somebody fight you at school and you went back to school the next day and you have your mommy or your daddy or your big sister with you to defend you so you feel good, you feel strong, you have confidence, nobody cannot touch you and that who fight you yesterday is about to get beat up today and this is why we are here. This is why we are here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Sister Valdine. This is funny. Sister Valdine. I don't know if you're still here. The Lord want me to pray for a young woman. I don't know if she's your daughter. I don't know the connection. But I'm just going to go according to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Sister Valdine Senior. Do you have a daughter? Like a grown up daughter she's grown she's an adult i'm asking the question because the lord is speaking to me about a young woman that is connected to you do you have a daughter sister valdin senior there's an urgency to pray for a young woman who is very 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 close i don't know hallelujah the lord want me to pray and he didn't say pray for you. He said the young woman. Hallelujah. Jesus. My eyes are wide open. Glory to God. We have someone here from Jesus. We have new people here. May the Lord have mercy. We cry out. Somebody say, Lord have mercy. Sister Valdin, do you have a daughter? I'm asking you a question. You're saying hallelujah, but do you have a daughter? I want to continue, but I need your permission. There are some things that you need permission to do. You cannot just get up and pray for somebody's family member in their presence. You have to ask permission. And there is a reason why the Lord is doing this. So I need your permission, Sister Valdin, to go ahead you have only a son is he in a relationship you see i have to ask you these questions i don't know because i see a young woman and she's close to you she needs prayer 
I didn't say your daughter. I asked, do you have a daughter? Do you have a daughter-in-law? The Holy Spirit is speaking to me. Is there a young woman that look up to you as a mother figure? She's very close to you. My God. And I'm just being obedient. Is he in a relationship? I don't know. Because there is a young woman who look up to you. My God. Hallelujah. Jesus. We have to go to Jamaica today in more, on more than one occasion in the spirit. On more than one occasion in the spirit. Hallelujah. I pray I come back to Shika for to Kuruboku Sopaya Mantara Rababa Kosaya. Do you know somebody named Christine? Sister Valdin, do you know somebody named Christine? Jesus, Holy Spirit. I pray right now for Christine. Christine is in trouble. I pray for Christine right now. What is this? I pray for Christine. I pray, I cover Christine right now in the blood of Jesus Christ. I lift up prayer for Christine. My God, I'm lifting prayer for Christine. Christine, oh, Bado Kushika Sato. I hear Christine. Yes, he's married. Oh, Lord. Your son is married at church. I have a young lady who does. Hallelujah. Sister Valdin, you're going to have to shake up. I'm going to use some old time talking to you. You're going to have to shake up your follow ground. The Lord wants you to bless these people. And I'm not talking about money. Speak blessings over your daughter-in-law. Speak, speak, speak blessings over that young woman at the church. And when I say blessing, I'm talking about from the bottom of your belly. From all the way down here. Speak. Let some blessings flow out of you concerning your daughter-in-law. Let some blessings flow out of you concerning the young woman. The Lord wants to bless you. But you, some blessings are trapped in your belly that needs to release. So God can bless you. Jesus. Oga rabaroko shantolo boboko soto. Raka rabako shika sataya. Roboro konda rabako sete. Sister oh no no machita. Rabaka de koroko do boko shata. Aya ya ya kashandala boboko sete. Jesus. Glory to God. I know a Christine. But that's not the Christine that I'm talking. We have like two Christine on this platform. And I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not relating to any of the Christians that I am familiar with. Hey, Jesus, take over. Yes, I have a niece by this name. Okay, okay. So you know what I'm talking about. Christine is in trouble. Christine have entered into the enemy's camp. The Christine that you know. I don't know this Christine that I'm talking. But that Christine is in trouble. Oh God. Jesus. Mighty God. God have mercy upon these people in Jamaica. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every death warrant that is out against Christine. This morning we destroy it with the blood of Jesus Christ. Because I hear the Lord said, Christine, I don't know her. I know some Christine, but it's none of them. Because my eyes are open. But I pray, you know what? I don't know where Christine faith is. 
but I would love to talk to her. Sister Valdine, the Lord used me to tell her something I don't know how long ago. And the Lord is bringing me back to this word. The people in your family are strong with witchcraft. You're from a very Bantoruboko Shadabako Saya. You're from a very strong background with witchcraft. I don't know if you are aware of what I'm saying, but I speak with no apologies. Mintoroboko Soto Rakataya Lakasata. Okunda Baba Sister Woko Shiti Kosoto Rabadababo Kosa Sister Valdin Sister Valdin. I don't know where her faith is, Christine's faith, but I would love the opportunity to just say hello so I can destroy some things in the spirit in her life. All I want to hear is her voice because there are some things that need to be destroyed. My God. Jesus. Jesus, God will do it. God will do something before this month is out. And you will testify according to the word of God. Sister Valdin, be obedient. You love the Lord. You love the Lord. I know that. The Lord is speaking to me about you. The Lord want to open doors in your life. But you're going to have to do some spiritual things. And afterward. Do, I would encourage you to do it. While we're on the fasting. Our fasting begins next Thursday. So I would encourage you to go on this fasting with us. And while you're in this fasting, you can perform what the Lord said. Your reward will be great. Sister Glenna, your spiritual life needs to be in alignment. I, I, I don't know I don't I, I sense that you're wavering in the realms of the spirit the Lord is revealing to me that you are wavering sister Glenna George you're there in Grenada I'm calling you out the Lord want to do something in your life and this thing is long awaited the Lord want to bless you and your children but your spiritual life needs to be balanced you need to be focused the Lord wants to bless you and your children. The Lord wants to open more doors. And when I say open more doors, I'm meaning physical door, a house for one of your child. The Lord wants to bless oh God, tobacco. The Lord wants to bless one of your children with a home. But it depends on you because you are the root of the tree. Release that daughter of yours so she can be blessed. Release. Do it during the fasting. We're going on fasting next Thursday. I would encourage you to participate. And may the Lord have his way. And his will be done. I know a young woman here, young woman of God, she's in trouble. I saw her name. Sister Diane Peart, are you still here? Because I saw you. I, I've been fighting for you. I have been fighting for you, Jesus. Sister Diane Peart, I don't know if you're still here. I've been fighting for you. Dogs are about to bite you. I see dogs chasing you in the spirit. Be careful. You have entered into a no-fly zone and dogs, they said spiritual dogs. They said spiritual dogs after you. I don't know if you are still here. But I'm going to summon an angel 
with a sword of fire to surround you. You went into a yard that is loaded with bad dogs, spiritual bad dogs. And you, just, you said you're not afraid. Where are you? My God. Diane Peart, you said you're not afraid because you have the Holy Spirit. Mighty God. Sister Diane, are you still here? I went, to, I went to Jamaica to fight for you. And all I saw was dogs chasing you. You're on a piece of open land. Jesus, let your will be done. You are on a piece of open land. There is nothing on the land. It's dry land. Deserted land. And dogs are chasing you. Big bad spiritual dogs. Be careful. You know I love you. You say you're not afraid of them. Because I can hear you in the spirit. You are aware of your surroundings. You know when you're driving a car. And you're about to reverse. And the camera pops up and said check your surroundings. Right. You know the story. I'm not going in deep into it. It's spiritual. And bad dogs are guard dogs. They said some God, Jesus. I destroy every work of the enemy over your life, Diane Peart, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Because you said in the realms of the spirit, you don't care. You're a woman of God. Control what comes out of your mouth. Hallelujah. Be careful. Be careful. Hallelujah. Be careful. We are children of God. We cannot live anyhow. We cannot move anyhow. We cannot talk anyhow. We cannot conduct ourselves anyhow. Hallelujah. It is well. May the Lord do it for you. May the Lord do it in your life. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful? Jesus. Oh God, we say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Faithful God. You are high and lifted up. Awesome God. Lord, cover your people. Bless them today. The woman said yes. She have a niece by the name. Let your will be done. Let your will be done. In your people's lives. Lord. Remember her daughter-in-law today. Remember her son. Remember her son. I place his marriage at the cross. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We overturn the works of the enemy. We overturn, we override, we over, we disgrace the enemy right now. Glory to God. 
We disgrace them right now. Jesus. Hey, Jesus. Let your will be done, Lord. Let your win your this is Sister Cardine Carnegie. The Lord said I should tell you that He is a jealous God. Hallelujah. Sister Cardine Carnegie. The Lord said I should remind you He is a jealous God. Hey. This is all that we will be doing in the month of June. This is all Bakoshin Darababako Sato. It is well. If you're just joining, good morning and welcome to Breakfast with Jesus. Good morning. Hallelujah. Welcome. Thank you, Jesus. I opened my Bible this morning and the Lord took me to 1 Kings chapter 11 and I smiled because sometimes as children of God we think it's okay to live anyhow to do what we feel is right God is saying do what's right in my sight there are some things that God will never approve it doesn't matter how pretty it is. It doesn't matter how beautiful it looks. It doesn't matter how sweet the perfume is. There are some things that God oppose. Hallelujah. And in the book of 1 Kings chapter 11, I'm just going to read four verses. My God, sometimes we don't know that the things that we are doing, it's not of God. All because we don't read the word of God. Sometimes we wonder how some people turn out the way they turn out. It's because of sin. Sin is a reproach unto all men. Sin can destroy your looks. Be careful, people of God. We cannot take anything light in this time. The word today is focus on God. In the book of First Kings chapter 11, I'm going to read King James Version. And then I'm going to break it down. I'm not going to be long because I know many people don't want to hear Bible scripture. They come for prophecy. But without the word of God, prophecy don't have no use. Prophecy don't have any strength. Prophecy carry no value without the word of God. We need our prophecy to come from a place of prayer. A pure place. We need the prophetic word to come into our life. From a place. From a rock. Glory to God. The Bible declare. It says, but King Solomon loved many strange women. Did anybody know that there are a lot of people in ministry and they are still practicing prostitution? They are still practicing, yes, that life. I want to say this. But King Solomon loved many strange women together with the daughter of Pharaoh. So you see, the daughter of Pharaoh was an exception because she was worse. She's Egyptian. Back in that time, it was a no-no for people like Solomon. Hear this. Together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites. Anybody remember Moab? Ruth came from Moab. Moab is the place where they will kill that child and use the child for sacrifice if the child is born handicapped. Because maybe the mother had relations with the son or the sister had relations with the brother and the baby come out sick. They will 
cut up that child, throw it in the fire, use the sacrifice. That's what they do in Moab. So Solomon took women from Moab and Egypt. He went all the way. He didn't hold back. He took women, the Amorites, the Edomites. The Amorites is sister, brother to the Moabites. The Edomites, who was the Edomite? The Edomite was all the way back. My God, you know, what's his name? Esau. Esau's children became the Edomites. Hello? We read in the Bible. His other name for Esau was Edom. We need to know the word of God. So when we see these things, we don't understand. So this is why we have to study the word of God. So we know now the Amorites, those are the family to the Moabites. Lot children gave him two kids, two sons, Edom, the, the, not Edom, the Amorite and the Ammonite. Those were brothers. Hallelujah. They were brothers and they were cousins. The Zidonites, the Hittites, all these women Solomon got involved with. Women from this tribe of the nation concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, You shall not go into them, neither shall you come in unto you. They come in unto you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto these love. Solomon clave unto these in love. He loved them. They were beautiful. They were beautiful to look at. And back in those days, they didn't worry about your character. It's just looks. Hallelujah. It wasn't about anything else. Just the look. Just the physical appearance. Hallelujah. Verse 3 said he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines. And his wives turned away his heart. Full stop. If you look at verse 2. It said concerning this, God did not approve it. God said don't go into them and don't let them come into you. Don't go into their home. Don't marry them. Now I'm going to read over here. The Bible said King Solomon loved many foreign women. Because they were foreigners. They came from different country. Egypt was right there on the border of Israel. Moab, Moab was right there. They raid the, the tombs. During summertime. Can you imagine? These people raid a cemetery and take the casket. So it's been a long time. People have been stealing casket from cemetery. But they came from different countries. Now if you are doing it in the same place that you live. You will get caught. We're talking Bible over here. Solomon loved many foreign women. Beside Pharaoh's daughter, he married women from Moab, Ammon, Edom, Sidon, and from among the Hittites. Verse 2 said, The Lord had clearly instructed the people of Israel, You must not marry them because they will turn your heart to their gods. Yet Solomon insisted on loving them anyway. He had 700 wives. Royal birth, the word royal birth means princesses. My God, Jesus, glory to God. 300 concubines, and in fact, they did turn his heart away from the Lord. You see, the word of God is the oldest book throughout history. Because it's old, some people despise the Bible. They don't want to read it anymore. They said, it's the same thing over and over. No. 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 Every time you read the Bible, you find something different when you spend time in it. 
hours to find out. Solomon knew that this was not of God. But after he finished building the temple, when he got old, my God, when he got up in age, if you look at verse 4, he said, In Solomon old age, they turn his heart to worship other God instead of being completely faithful to the Lord is God. When you get involved with certain in certain relationship, even with friends, there are some people they met you loving the Lord, they met you even in church. And let me tell you what they will take you out of church. They will influence you to leave the church. They will influence you not to go back to church and stay home. There are some people with this kind of spirit. The Bible said we have to be careful. Study their background. Study where they came from. There are some men, they go to church just to marry a woman from church. And once the marriage takes place, that woman cannot go back. The man begin to find fault with the pastor. He begin to find fault with the bishop, the deacon, everybody, the elder, the usher. Because he only had one intention, was to come and take you out of church. There are some women with that same spirit of separation. Now they begin to fight against the people in the church and they will encourage you, let's go see that Obia man. They're, they're, they're not going to present it that way. They're going to say, you know what? I know about a church that my granny used to go to. And they will tell you things. And they will show you things. And they, yes, before you know it, you're investing deeply into witchcraft. Stay on the Lord's side. Focus on God. You are not in church because of pastor. Because let me share something with you. A pastor is a gift to the church. And this is why I will always be ripping up the book of Jeremiah all over. He said, I will give you a pastor according to my heart. So you don't have to like the pastor to be in church. Many people leave church because they don't like pastor. Pastor is not there for you. Pastor is there to do God work. When you leave the church, pastor is still there. Pastor is not going to leave the church because you don't like him or her. No. Let me go to the Bible. Somebody said we need to hear this rev. My God. Jeremiah chapter 3. Don't leave church because you don't like pastor. It was never about you in the first place. It was never about you. So when you leave the church because you don't like what pastor said, hey, hey, you need to repent. You need to strip down and go into sackcloth and ashes and cry out to God. Some people stop going to church because pastor don't mention their name anymore when he's on the podium. Some people won't come back to the platform because their, name, their names are not being mentioned anymore. Why? They get what they came for. They got their breakthrough. God already blessed them. Leave somebody else to receive their blessings. Jeremiah chapter 3. I read this like maybe every month. The same scripture. Because I it's true. Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15. It said... I will give you pastors according to my heart that will feed you with knowledge and understanding. And it shall come to pass when you be multiplied and increased in the land those days, said the Lord, they shall say no more. God said he will give you pastors according to his heart. So don't go around hating on pastor because pastor did not bring the message that you like. Who cares what you like? As long as it's coming from the mouthpiece of God, that's all that matters. Somebody need their breakthrough. Somebody need to be told the truth. It's not about you. It's nothing personal. Salvation is already personal. God will convict those who he wants to be convicted. The message might come today to heal you. 
to fix you. But it will go to destroy some things in someone else's home. So we cannot be partial here. So I came today to let you know whatever God said, so shall it be. Is Sister Diane Peart still on the platform? Hallelujah. Jesus. Glory to God. Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Let your will be done. People of God, Solomon became disobedient in the end. He was the one. You see, people don't understand. God bless him with wisdom never given to any other throughout the world. In life, let's use this word, in the human race. And you see what happened in the end? Or we turn out? He was a king. But then he became a king of sin. He became the boss of sin. He fell. It's not how you start. It's how you finish. I don't know who God sent me here to talk to today. Jesus. It's not the way you started off, but it's the way you finish. Sister Diane Peart, I know you will come back to see this, but I just want to say this right here. You know the reason why I'm so humble? I've gone through so much. Somebody said, after meeting my husband 12 years in my life, change for the worse. Hello. Not every relationship will be fruitful because sometimes it's not of God, so it won't be a fruit. I'm talking to the woman of God, Sister Diane Perry. The reason why I'm so humbled, I could have been somewhere else today in another country preaching, but I'm humbled, I'm waiting on the Lord. And I just want you to know, glory to God. I just want you to know, wait on the Lord. Don't try to do it on your own. Sister Diane, you cannot make it happen. The Lord show me dog chasing you. And this is serious. Spiritual, spiritual dogs are chasing you. And you are all alone. Because the enemy separated you from the people that God blessed you with. So these dogs can bite you. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. So God used Solomon. God blessed Solomon. But because of flesh... Solomon turn. Hallelujah. The Bible declare, it says, these are the things that Solomon did. In 1 Kings chapter 11 verse 4, if you have your Bible, people of God, I'm saying if because I know many of you don't have Bible. It's phone for the Bible. But I encourage you to get a Bible, when you, especially when you're coming on this platform, because I use the Bible. It's true. In Solomon's old age, they turn his heart to worship other God. You see? You see? In his old age, when he was helpless, because when you're getting old, is when you need to study more. But in his old age, when he was supposed to go to God, his heart was turned to other gods. People have got to be careful who you get involved with. Some people act like they love God, but really they, they need deliverance. They're not right. Solomon was David's son. He was a child of promise. We don't know much about his mother. 
all we know that before Solomon came, the mother was married. David, when it was time for him to go to war, David didn't go to war. He went on top of the roof. And he looked and he saw the woman, Beersheba. And he sent his men to go and get her. And he spent time with her. And then when her husband came, he wanted the man to go sleep with the woman and the man refused. And because the man refused to sleep with his own wife, David put him before the war for him to die. She got pregnant during the course of the time. And the Lord killed that child. And God said to David, David, clean up the woman and marry her. And he took her as his wife. And then Solomon came. No, look what Solomon did. Solomon messed up everything. In his old age, God was with him because he had wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So God was with him. He was a prophet. This is why people came from all over the world to see him. He had the spirit of knowledge and the spirit of wisdom. But in the end, when he should have been strong in the Lord, he turned. Let's see what he turned to. The Bible said, His heart turned to worship other gods instead of being completely faithful to the Lord, his God. The God of David, Solomon turned from that God. As his father David had been. He turned from the God that his father did love. Remember God said, I found David, a man of my own heart. So Solomon's heart became bad. Solomon worshipped Astoret, the, God of, the goddess of the Sidonians. And Molech, the detestable God of the Ammonites. In this way, Solomon did what was evil in the sight in the Lord's sight he refused to follow the Lord completely as his father David had done he was a king in the beginning doing God's work but in the end he became a king in sin on, Mount, on the Mount of Olives of the East Jerusalem, he built a pagan shrine. He built up an obia shop. Solomon, he was wise. He was wealthy. God bless him. God gave him rest. He never worked a day in his life. He never go to war. When kings go to war, Solomon got rest. So he didn't have to go to war. Hallelujah. So you see, he did not follow after his father's footstep. Hallelujah. He built a shrine for Chemosh, the detestable god of Moab. And another one, Molech, the detestable god of the Ammonites. Solomon built such shrine for all the foreign wives. All the foreign wives to use for burning incense and sacrificing to their God. So now you see the burning of incense. I just want to read this today because I have some people were asking me questions about the burning of incense. It's people said, Oh, it makes the place smell good. It has spiritual significance. The burning of incense. They burn it to other gods. They knew how powerful incense was. So they use it to do evil. Hallelujah. The Lord was very angry with Solomon. For his heart turned away from the Lord. The God of Israel. Who had appeared to him twice. God appeared to him twice. Once it was in a dream. I don't know who God is using this. You see. People of God, pay attention to your surroundings and check yourself. 
Some people tell you that they read all kind of books. You don't know who, who, who is the author of some of these books. You don't know them. Sometimes you need to research the author of the book before you buy it, before you read it. I remember once I, we had a test, an exam, and uh, somebody was talking a book, and the professor said, no, research the writer, the author of the book. Just research the author of the book. And when they researched the author of the book, it was written by a lesbian who believe in other gods. So don't just jump to go and purchase a book. Research the person who write the book, who was inspired to write the book. Research that person. Because in eventually, some of the things of this person's life will come out in the book. And it could be an influential person who will poison you. This will poison your spirit. So don't just run and purchase any book. Research the authors of the books that your children read. Right here, Solomon got into trouble with God. He was not listening to the prophets anymore. He was not listening to the pastors anymore. He was not worshipping God anymore. And that was in his old age. And the Bible make it clear. He had many wives. Hallelujah. Jesus. He had 700 wives. But the Bible said he built shrine for all the foreign wives. 700 he had. So the ones that were foreigners, he put up halter, shrine, place that they can go and practice witchcraft for those women. He did that. That's how he shown his love. Giving them something to destroy them even further. My God. The Bible said the Lord was angry with Solomon for his heart turned. I pray that your heart will never be turned against the things of God. You see, he was doing good in the beginning. God used him. But in the end, he began to dwell on other things, sacrificing to other gods. So that's how King Solomon's life turned out. God gave him gifts. Many scriptures in the Bible were written by Solomon because of the gift that was given to him. So you see, don't focus too much on the leader. Focus on their works. Pastors make mistakes. Pastors mess up. A pastor is not there to concern himself about the things that you feel. The pastor is there to teach you. Oh Jesus. The Bible said to teach you knowledge. To feed you with knowledge and understanding. Some people when pastor get into trouble. They stop going to church. Don't stop going to church because pastor get into trouble. Pastor job is to teach you. Teach you. Once God give you that spot, he will send pastor to teach you. Feed you with knowledge. So you see how ministry don't work with friendship? Ministry and friendship don't coincide. No. 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 Solomon was very effective in the beginning. And in the end, because of flesh, because of sin, he failed God. Solomon failed God. 
First Kings chapter 11. Solomon failed God. But in the book of Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15, it tells you that God is the one that gives you a pastor. Many of you are holding on to pastors. Don't hold on to pastor. God give you a pastor. God give you a pastor. Pray for your pastor. A pastor is a gift to the church. Pray for your pastor. Stop running from church because you don't like the pastor. Pastor speak the truth. You have a problem with it. Take it up with God. Go to God with whatever you're worried about. Don't go there because of the pastor. Don't leave because of the pastor. Because he's on an assignment. Remember that. He has an assignment. Likewise, you have an assignment. Don't lose your office because of your feelings. Don't walk out of your office because of your feelings. You also have an assignment just like pastor does. Hey. I encourage you to be obedient people of God. And focus on the things of God. Don't allow the devil to disgrace you. There are some men who will come into your life. And will try to get you to practice witchcraft. There are some women that will show up in your family dealing with your son and your nephew and your brother. And they will be coming with the witchcraft. Remember Rachel? How pretty she was. And she walked with her idols. Hey, my God. When I was young, I was bad. And I went to a guy's house. He had a big job. And in the morning when I woke up, he was in the bathroom. And the bed, the bed had a head. So I opened up the bed head. I think I said this here before. When I opened up the bed head and I look, there were all kinds of vials. This right here is eucalyptus oil. They got like a hundred or more different vials. When you open it, it's like I open a pharmacy. And I got dressed and I leave and I went home. I asked my mom what that meant because I didn't know anything. She said, don't go back there. They're practicing witchcraft. My mother said, and his mother used to sell in the market. <laughs> you see? Listen to me, people of God. The young man mother used to sell in the market in Old Arbor, Jamaica. My mom said, don't go back. I went back because I liked the guy. But I got into trouble because I had to end up beat him. And when I said beat him, I mean physically broke a piece of stick and beat him because he did something to me that I cannot mention here. He took away some clothes for me. And one night I got so mad, I broke a piece of stick and I was just beating him. I don't know. I was very angry. And maybe because what I heard about the family, when I saw the thing, and my mom told me what that meant. And I kept going back, making the same mistake. Let me tell you something, people of God. We have to be careful what we do. When we are in our feelings. It took a while for me to get rid of the man. He was very handsome. Very generous. But the bed that he's sleeping was loaded with all kinds of oils and it wasn't perfume and it wasn't eucalyptus oil because i read well there were no names on these bottles just labels labels with like signs so let me tell the people of god be careful who your children married to 
Be careful who they go with. You have to pray for God to give your children good spouse. Hallelujah. Good morning. Welcome. Good afternoon, Kent. Kent, England. Welcome. Hallelujah. I encourage you, people of God. I've gone through a lot. I learned by my mistakes. And I was stubborn. Yeah, the guy cute and he looked good and he dressed nice. Looked like an English man. <laughs> but it's hard. According to the word of God. It said the heart is deceitful. And desperately wicked. Who can know it? So I encourage you people of God. Be careful. Be extremely careful. Don't get mad at pastors because they are... Let God deal with them. There's a scripture in the Bible that reminds us. God, don't curse out no pastor. Allow God to fix them. Not everybody that's preaching is a pastor. Not everybody who is preaching is, was called from God. Some of them call themselves. A lot of people are practicing witchcraft. And that's what you are doing. But they use the word of God to trick people. Be careful. Be careful. Don't trouble them. Leave them alone and let God deal with them. Because anything that's happening in the dark, it must come to light. It must. It must come to light. Solomon is an example in the Bible. But God make an example out of Solomon. You see, he was a builder. He was called to build the temple of God. And he did it down to the T. And after he was done, he began to build a shop, shrine for idols to worship you see after he finished doing god work he began to do man's work the devil's work oh god help me oh god help my children not to get involved with any of such people we have to pray for our children not to get involved with them kind of people the bible declare it said, for the Lord clearly instructed the people of Israel, you must not marry to them. Because they will turn your heart to other gods. Help me, oh God. Help my children. Oh God, help them. So they find spouses that will lead them to Jesus Christ and not to other gods. Good morning and welcome. Now you see, we talk about Solomon. I love him because God used him mightily in the beginning. We cannot hide it, but we are talking about in his old age. He did the things that God said, don't do it. He got lost. We can get involved with people to for us to lose our mind. Do you know how many pastors are in madhouse, sanitarium, institutionalized, don't know their head from their feet? Do you know how many great leaders have been instituted? Yes. Yes, institutionalized. Things happen. So we have to pray for our children that God send them mighty men of God, mighty women of God. No denying. Somebody said, my husband don't like it when I pray and talk to Jesus, but I love my God. 
because if it wasn't for the Lord, I would have, I wouldn't have, mm -hmm. sometimes he even laugh. Let, let, let him continue to laugh. Don't worry, continue to pray. Just continue to pray. You see, the devil can use anybody, even the person that you are married to. The devil can use anybody. Look how the devil do, did. Look what Satan did to Solomon. Turn his heart away from God. Because of flesh. You see, if he married, let's do a, a little bit of calculation right here. The Bible said he married 700 wives and 300 concubines. That's a thousand women. Let, let us look into the book of, let, let me look at, <laughs> yes, let me look at the, the, the Old Testament. Let me go into um, Jesus. Let me go into King James and see what King James had to say clearly. Oh God, it's, it, it is well. Yes. It mentioned, let me see if they mentioned the amount of princesses that he had. Yes, he had some princess. It's in verse 3. Verse 3 said, he had three, 700 wives, princesses. So they didn't mention the amount of princess when they talk about royal birth. So there was a thousand women plus princesses. So if you count, it's 300. Hallelujah. It's 52 weeks in a year. And in each week, it's seven days in a week. 365. We are doing our calculation. How could he have all these women? What did he say to them? He never had time. And this is why they said Solomon was the wisest man. And yet he never knew the secret of a woman. There were too many. He was confused. They messed him up. Jesus. Glory to God. Hela babako sataya. Manta rabako shaya. People of God, pay attention to the scripture. Pay attention to the scripture. Jesus. Seven days in a week. 52 weeks in a year. What? 365 days. And if he had a thousand plus women, that's insanity. That's insanity. That was what God told him not to do. But he had the money and the fame. And all the women that he married that were foreigners, the foreign wives, he built shrine. So Solomon never married a good woman. We're not talking about the concubines and the princess. We're talking about wives. All the women that he married to, according to verse 8. He gave them shrines. So they had their own place to practice what they want to practice. People of God, let us pray. Let us pray. This is a man that used to prophesy. Okay? We're talking about a man that used to prophesy. Hallelujah. We're talking about someone that used to prophesy and know all things. And was able to go deep into people's lives. You see how we turn out? What would you call that? A chief of sinners. A king of sinners. Because he was a very powerful king. One that never have to go to war. 
kings go fight war. He didn't have to. He was a sweet boy. He was a pretty boy. He stayed home. My God, may the Lord have mercy upon the people in our lives. Anything that goes on in the dark, it doesn't matter how long it takes. So when your children marry to people who are not of God, even if they are pretending to be of God, eventually God will expose them. It, listen to me. God will even expose them at Thanksgiving dinner, Christmas, whatever holiday that significant. So I pray right now that God expose every evil intention of the wicked among us. Every evil intention of the wicked among us will be exposed in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. David fight war. He killed many men. God said, David, you cannot build a temple because your hands are too bloody. No. Solomon came for that purpose but in the end Solomon he differ Solomon mess up everything Solomon disgraced God he was disobedient his heart turned from the Lord may your heart never be turned from God it doesn't matter what you're going through. May your heart never turn from the Lord. May you grow in the Lord and continue in his word. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We have to love the word of God. Everything that we need to know is right here. Every mix-up that happens in life happens in the Bible. But when you go all the way to the back of the Bible, into the book of Galatians, Jesus, it tells you, it tells you, one, I know, it was one of those women who bewitched Solomon. Yeah, had to be. Had to be. It had to be. It had to be. Maybe it was the one from Africa. Maybe. I'm just saying. Maybe. I might be wrong. Hallelujah. I might be wrong. But maybe. Hababokushaya. Maybe. Paul had a prime example. He said, look at you. Everything was going good when you started off with Jesus Christ. But now look. Look what happened. Look what's happening. Jesus. Oh, we thank the Lord for the word. Solomon, he was a good king he was a just king he was a humble king he never got anybody killed no no hallelujah no not one not one he was a lover of many women he was in his feelings and after he finished doing the work of God he began to stray from the path that he was on people of god i pray today that you never waver you never be a double-minded the bible said a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways it's my prayer that you continue in the lord in the word jesus that's my prayer it's my bakushika sataya my God.
no one was there to tell Solomon. He didn't have any spiritual father. He didn't have any spiritual mother. No one was there to talk to him, to counsel him on his ways. You see, these are the things that happen when you don't have spiritual parents. If you look into the book of Galatians chapter 3, verse 1. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 3. Can somebody just screenshot it or copy it and paste it up here? Galatians chapter 3. Because I know a lot of people, they don't have Bible app. They don't have, just find it, write it, whichever way you want to bring it up there. Galatians chapter 3, if you have a tablet or something. It says, Oh foolish Galatians. Oh foolish. We're talking Bible here. Oh foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you? That you should not obey the truth. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ have been evidently set forth crucified among you. This only I would learn of you. Receive the Holy Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Hallelujah. Are you so foolish? Verse 3. Having begun in the spirit and now are now made perfect by the flesh. So many people, he started out good in the spirit. People were visiting him from all over. But once he considered himself to complete the work of God, he began to do his own thing. When you are not led by the spirit, you will get lost. When you are not led, when the Spirit of the Lord is not leading you, when you don't give God the, 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 the driver's seat, when you don't give God the steering wheel, you will get lost. Because without Him, we are nothing. Without the Jesus Christ, we are nothing. I came to talk to somebody here today. The Bible make it clear. It said, how foolish can you be after you start off? Starting new life in the Spirit. Why are you now trying to become perfect in by your own human efforts we cannot lean to our own understanding no oh jesus i'm here with the word without the word we are gonna get lost so you see paul said you started off good in the spirit why no did somebody put a spell on you? Yes, this thing is possible. You're in the spirit all the time. You're praying all the time. And you listen, people get jealous of that. People will get jealous of you connecting to the word of God. People will be angry at you. Once you're staying in the word of God, you will be sharp. Your spirit man will be sharpened. They can't just approach you and talk to you anyhow. No. It's impossible. The Lord will begin to speak. Sharpen your spirit, people of God. Stay in the word. Without him, we are nothing. What would I do? What would I be? Where would we be without Jesus Christ? You see, the money that Solomon have couldn't save him. He lose. He fail God. The amount of gold and this and that. And all these women, not one of them were of God. The women that Solomon chooses, they took him away. They took his heart from the Lord. None of them were there to comfort him in the word of God. Remember David in his last days, Solomon's father. The Bible said in the last days, they sent for a virgin to lay next to David. 
to keep him warm and to minister to him. But in Salah, Jesus, I don't know who God is using me to talk to, but I came to tell you, stay in the word. Solomon built a lot of shrine. That's what you call a built altar and he built a building over the altar. Makes it a shrine where they go and worship idols. He built shrine for all the wives that were foreigners. So he makes sure they worship their idol. They all had their own idol. And that's how we love. That's how we prove his love. Glory to God. I pray today that your heart will never be turned away from the Lord. It's my prayer. You see, even though he was David's son, he did nothing like David did. David was wild. But in the end, they had to minister the word of God. David never built a shrine. He never built anything. He was a just man. When they killed, when Saul died, God killed Saul. But somebody cut off Saul's head and brought it to David with his jewelry, with his big bracelet. David said, aren't you afraid to touch the Lord's anointed? And David ordered his death, the man's death. So David feared God to the end. Don't lose your faith in the Lord. You might not know me. You might be watching from behind the scenes. I want you to know that the Lord loves you. Jesus loves you. Don't give up on him. Don't give up on the Lord. Things might not be going as fast as you would desire. That woman that you desire to marry, she might not show up yet. Wait on the Lord. The, they might tell you that you're going to marry to a woman of God. Wait, God will do it. They might have mentioned to you that you will marry to a man of God. Sit down and wait. Don't go hunting. Don't go man hunting. Ladies, stop going man hunting on the internet. Stop going man hunting all over. Wait on the Lord. Let the man hunt you. Jesus. No more man hunting. Because if you're hunting, you are postponing your blessings. When you are out there hunting, as a woman hunting for a man, do you think your husband that God ordained for you is going to find you? No, because you're on a different journey. I'm talking to some men now. Do you think when you are practicing witchcraft, God is going to give you a woman of God? No, because your hands are dirty. It's time to repent. Ladies, no other man can find your husband. So don't give no money to no other man to help you find man. God bless a man who find a wife. And find favor in the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Be obedient. Wait. Wait on the Lord. Yes. That's the scripture. God bless you. Wait on the Lord. When you are out there hunting. When you are in the club. You're asking God to give you a man of God, but you are going to the club. You're asking God to give you a woman of God, but you are still in the club. What's your problem? You don't have no patience with God. Look how long God is waiting for you to change. And you don't want to wait on him. God is waiting patiently on you to change your ways. Somebody said, pastor is cussing them out. No, I'm not. We need to learn to humble ourselves and wait. 
You cannot expect to marry a woman of God and you are going to the club as a man. There are some ladies who go to church that still go to the club. And you're still looking for a man in the club. You cannot change. You cannot bring a man from the club and change him. No. Only God can do that. My God. I was very disobedient when I was in sin. I didn't care. I was very promiscuous. But I never stepped to a man. I was proud. Which is not even good. But I, I didn't have the guts to step to a man. Because I know that's not how it works. People of God. Let us wait on the Lord. And he will strengthen our hearts. Don't get weary. Continue to do good. Continue to go and do what you have to do for the Lord. Don't stop paying your tithes because... Your, 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 your situation didn't work out. Don't stop. Don't get angry at God. God is waiting on you. So he can bless you. But you're trying to do it your way. God will give you your own husband. God will give you your own wife. And that will give you peace. Things will begin to make sense. You will begin to see the fruit of your labor. Let God work it out. Solomon jumped before God and got into trouble. God loved him. God said, Solomon is my son. God called Solomon his son. Oh, Jesus. But Solomon failed God. Don't let him down. Don't let him down. Don't let him down. Allow the Lord to minister to your heart right now. Somebody say, Lord, help me. Help me in my situation. Help my unbelief. When we find ourselves doing it our way, it's because we don't believe that it can get done. God can do it. It doesn't matter where you are located. He will meet you at the point of your need. Yes. Many of you are asking God to do this and do that, and you work. Pay your tithes. Have a covenant with God. Get into covenant with God. Prove him. We cannot rob him. There is a scripture in the Bible that said we cannot rob God. No. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus. There is a scripture in the Bible in Malachi chapter 3 verse 8 said... Can a man rob God? Say, so will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, we're in. Have you robbed thee? In tithes and offering? Oh, Jesus. God said, if you try to rob him, he will curse you. He will even curse the whole nation. Glory to God. He said, bring all your tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. And prove me. He said, prove me now. I, if I will not open doors and windows in heaven and pour out blessings that there won't be room enough for you to receive it. And this is why I came to let you know when some people are waiting on the Lord, they said, I'm not paying no offering or no tithes until God bless me. God said, you cannot rob me. God said, you cannot rob me.
Hallelujah. God said, you cannot rob me. You're robbing yourself. Somebody said, don't ask for the blessing if you're not in any position to receive it. It's true. It is true. You cannot rob God. You're robbing yourself. You leave the church and you're trying to do it your own way. Don't end up like Solomon. Some people are still searching. Even when you tell them the truth, they are still searching. They need to hear more. And this is how they practice witchcraft. That's how witchcraft begins. People want to know more. They don't want to seek the face of God. Build your covenant with God. Glory to God. Get into a covenant with your daddy. No one is asking you to do anything that is not of God. Solomon never had anybody to talk to him. David were, was blessed. He had Nathan and he had other prophets. He had people to minister to him. Solomon was on his own. He was a... Once he finished building the temple for the Lord, he began to stray, do his own thing. Be obedient people of God. It is the word of God. Today is the 15th of the month. Usually, on the 15th of the month, that's when we are we release the money for charity, the donations, the charity donations. So I encourage you if you did not if you did not send your charity donations yet, go ahead and do so. Hallelujah. Jesus. We might have to push for maybe another day or two. So people can get to send out their donations. We might have to push for another two days. In the evening. Not today. Because some people did not get the chance to send their donations for charity. So I encourage you people of God. We are pushing for maybe tomorrow evening. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can do the, yes. So I encourage you, if you're here and you didn't send off your charity donations, go ahead and do so. The number is 860-634-8557. You can use PayPal, Cash App, or Zelle. Glory to God. Send off your donations for charity so we can release it. Whatever God said, that's what we're going to do. No flesh around here. So I encourage you, I beseech you by the mercies of God. Go ahead and send off your charity donations. Whatever the Lord place in your heart. So we can release it. I encourage you, people of God, be obedient in this time. Hallelujah. My time is up. I have to go. If the Lord touch your heart to bless the ministry, go ahead and do so. If this message touch you and you said, Lord, I know your place in my heart to bless this ministry. I don't have Zill Cash App or PayPal. You can contact me at the same number, 860-634-8557. Contact me at that number on WhatsApp and I'll give you the information based on your location to be a blessing. Amen. I love you with the love of the Lord. Stay blessed. I don't know if I'll be here later. Last night the Lord pulled me out of my comfort zone so I was here. I'm just being obedient. So I encourage you to participate. And let God be, you see, let God be glorified. 
Whatever God said is what we are going to do. We want to see others succeed in life. Whoever God is giving this money to, because I have not even, he didn't even give me a name yet. I'm going to have to go in prayer because the money is not ready. We need more people to send off their donations. Every month, if you're here for the first time, every month the ministry bless people here on this platform with cash. And we're not giving the same person each time we go to different people according to the you see right here on this platform amen it's not a lot but at least it's from the lord it's what god put together to release so i encourage you to send off your donations hallelujah it should have been this evening but based on a lot of people did not get the chance to send off dears yet hallelujah so we are still waiting for yours. So go ahead and be obedient. And have a wonderful day. Stay blessed.